Thanks right. for taking the time, Mario. No worries. Thank you very much. The first question uh, I wanted to ask was, you've obviously got a new role at Pepper Money. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Yeah, so I've been with Pepper now for, for a good six years, um, uh, originally um, as the Director of Sales and Distribution, and now taken on the manage, uh, Managing Director role. Really, what it really means is that now I am in charge of the day-to-day -day operations and profitability of the Australian mortgage and personal loan business. And, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. It's exciting. It's, it's a challenge for me that uh, I, it's no longer just a sales focus and driven uh, role. But obviously the sales component still drives a lot of um, the initiatives that, that happens in the Australian business. The main differences between the two is, is that now I, I will assume control of the, uh, the profitability, the P&L and the day-to-day -day operations of the Australian mortgage and personal loan business. Pepper has really set itself uh, apart from the rest of the non-banks in this space in terms of, you know, it's got a strong loan origination mortgage business, it's got the loan servicing business, it's also got the strong securitisation program as well. You operate in global markets, North Korea, the UK, as well as Australia. Tell us a little bit about how all these different parts of the business are interconnected. Yeah, look, it's been a global strategy for the business over the past uh, probably now six years, a, a comfortable five and a half, six years. And uh, it's fair to say now, uh, looking at it, uh, that the, the strategy has definitely uh, come to, to, to plan and, and is definitely working as envisaged four to five years ago as, as we were putting the strategy together. Today, uh, the offshore businesses will represent circa 50% of our total revenue, uh, which, is, which shows you this, the level of diversification that we have in the business. And that 50% is not hinged on one country alone. It's, 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 it's across multiple uh, businesses across multiple countries. And, and for us, the, the strategy at the moment is to, is to make sure that, that the, the foundation is solid in each one of those um, businesses. And the, the, the appetite for, for new uh, uh, countries or new businesses uh, in our M&A section of the business is definitely on the horizon. And um, with the same strategy, It'll be most likely the servicer-led, uh, looking for a good, solid uh, management team in, in that particular uh, business, and then uh, you know sticking to our core, which our core is obviously understanding credit, understanding servicing, understanding originations and lending. Today, it's uh, yeah, it's it's now greater than 50% uh, on the cusp of 50% of our total revenue, and 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 we don't see that slowing down either. So it's it's a really good balance of the businesses. If we have a look at uh, the diversity versus the risk of, of, of having such a, a wide net approach, mm. the good thing about it is, is that we are a servicer and a lender. Now, usually what tends to happen is it, that relies on the particular market in, in, in the economy in that particular market of if it's a great economy and, and then the, the lending will either emerge if we haven't lent there before or it'll grow. If the economy starts to slow down or the lending market starts to slow down, then the servicing arm starts to kick in. So really it's an offensive and defensive strategy, which now has been in play for six years. And I, I am confident in saying that it's been very successful and um, uh, it's, it's really uh, rewarding and, and, and uh, you know, we're delighted to see how it's all panned out. A lot of people were uh, very sceptical on the, on this, on the plan. And, and why are we going to uh, uh, South, uh, South Korea and why, what, are, what are we doing in Spain, UK and Ireland and you know, all the areas that you'd probably say people will stay away from is where we gravitated to. Just uh, finally, I want to get down to what's happened in the Australian mortgage market over the last 12 to 18 months sort mm. of thing. It's been a lot of change, you know, there's a lot of different pricing movements. To the end of to, to 2016, we sort of saw the, the big banks and some of the non-majors as well increasing their, their rates. Has this created any opportunities for the non-banks and, and Pepper in particular? Look, it has. Um, um, you know, some more than others. Uh, depends on, on, on the, the ap appetite that may have on uh, the type of credit and the type of customer profile that they're, they're accustomed to or, or used to uh, originating. So with us, um, you know, we've been pricing for risk since the day we opened our doors in 2000, uh, 2001. So for us, it's, it's not a foreign area. It's, it's something that we do every day and do exceptionally well and uh, you know, without uh, being too biased, I think we're the best at, at it, uh, no, no questions asked. And the reason why is that we understand the credit component, we understand the consumers, the personas, the attributes, you know, the behaviour patterns that they have, to then make that calculated uh, and, and well-deserved uh, outcome in, in the credit assessment. So the customer themselves have always been there. 
Um, it's whether the, the, the banks had the appetite to write it, whether they were pricing to accept a level of higher risk than your, your, your vanilla type loans, um, which at the moment, as you said earlier, which is, you know, that landscape changes on a daily basis. Whether it be appetite from a, uh, from a bank, whether it be regulatory changes, you know, whether it be, you know, pricing advantages, uh, whether it's investment, credit impaired, you know, th at the end of the day, any time a, a broker or a consumer has gone out and, and, and received any form of exception to the rule at, at time of assessment, that is deemed non-conforming. That's not prime. It was that particular person made that decision at that point in time to take on that risk. That's what we do every day. Banks do it on a very, very ad hoc basis and cannot go out to the market and commit to it. We actually go out and commit to it. That's the, the model that we have. Have we benefited from that? Definitely. And, and the way we have benefited is that we never went out to the market and changed our business strategy. We never went out to the market and changed our product appetite or consumer appetite. What we did do is, is stick to our, our core messaging, which was, we're here for you when the others aren't. And, and I think what happened for us during this year was the appetite changed for a lot of lenders. Um, and then it opened up the doors for us for more brokers to then go, what else is out there in the market? And Pepper was the first one there to go, to go and grab that. Now, there are others that change their strategy. There are others that change their core messaging. Um, that, that's, that's not us. Uh, and we will, we, will, we will stick to that and, and we know what we want for the year. We know how we want to uh, play the game and we don't just go hot and cold overnight. So that, that's not us. So we, we're very happy with it because now what's happened is we've been able to showcase not only our products, not only the level of service that we give our, our customers and our brokers, but now the brokers are saying, wow, we could not have ever envisaged that you guys not only just just did everything right from the start to finish but you pick up the phone your credit guys talk to me over the phone we can work the deal together and you're doing this all manually and yet you can still do it faster than any bank manually and still do it faster than any bank you're getting intimate with with actually every every application form so you know for us that was the big thing for us this year uh, brokers saw what we stood for it's not just looking after customers that fell outside. Yeah. It was the service proposition, the people that we had. You know, we have had constant uh, recognition for our BDMs on, on the road, for, for the level of service that they give, the product knowledge that they have. Um, you know, all of these are a, are a combination of who we stand for. Uh, it's not just hinged on a product. It's not just hinged on a service. It's, it's all those components in one. So that's the benefit that we have every time someone moves in the industry, whether it be regulatory, whether it be a bank appetite, uh, mortgage insurance, whatever happens in that, in that area, the moment we get an opportunity to, 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 to be with that broker and interact with that broker, we have a very high propensity to recoup that customer or that broker for many more deals to come. So it's, it's a really good um, thing that we've, and we've noticed it over the course of five years, circa now I think it's by around 38% year on year growth of the number of brokers that actually use Pepper. And that coincides now with the growth that we've had in the business. Yeah. Once again this year, it's fair to say um, that our, our, our business has grown again um, on record levels uh, this year and we don't see that stopping. It's not because we're taking on more risk. It's brokers realising, more brokers realising what we do and how good we are at doing it. And they are now going, well, we appreciate that. You're there for us when we need you. You're there for our customers, uh, more importantly, when they need you. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really refreshing. Um, and, and we're excited because from our perspective, the horizon looks very strong. Um, you know, the non-conforming market is still the largest underserved market period in the financial sector. Mm -hmm. And I think the more brokers that jump on board, the more brokers that realise that there is a customer at the end of every transaction, the more our business will benefit, the more the customer will benefit, and the more the broker will benefit. So it's a, it's a chain reaction all the way through. We've never done a transaction 
that benefits a broker on its own accord. We've never done a transaction that benefits Pepper on its own accord. All three people, borrower, broker, Pepper, will benefit out of the transaction because we're here to give them a good service. We're giving, we're giving them a, a, an opportunity to enter into a home or refinance or debt consolidate or whatever the case may be and a benefit to, to the broker at the end of the day because they've been able to help that customer and also get paid for doing that. So unashamedly, everyone is and, and should be happy in that, in that process. Good stuff. Mario, mm. thanks very much for your time. No worries, thank you.